Hi, today I'm going to tell you about a simple skincare routine that you can follow during pregnancy. I have covered dry skin, oily skin, acne prone skin, dark spots and even stretch marks. So I hope this video will be very useful to you. I have a detailed video on what are the skin changes that you see during pregnancy. Please do watch it because in that video I've explained what all changes your skin goes through and most of those changes are temporary and they do resolve after pregnancy. So this will help you in calming down and not worrying about each and every spot. So I highly recommend you watch that video. So now let's talk about a simple skincare routine that you can follow during pregnancy. First we need to know the ingredients that we have to avoid. So the first is retinol. You should absolutely not use a retinol. We all know that retinol should not be used if you are planning pregnancy or are pregnant. Retinol, if it is absorbed into the blood, can cause some birth defects in the baby. So do not use retinol. Second is salicylic acid. A high concentration of salicylic acid should be avoided as it has been known to cause impact on the baby. Third is hydroquinone. Any kind of skin lightening creams that you're using that is medicated, that has been prescribed, which has hydroquinone should be stopped. Fourth is Arbutin. Because Arbutin is the precursor of hydroquinone, we advise people to not use creams with Arbutin in it. Fifth is Benzoyl Peroxide. It has been shown that Benzoyl Peroxide applied on a larger area can lead to systemic absorption. So it's best to avoid Benzoyl Peroxide. Sixth is chemical filters in sunscreen. So in pregnancy, you should only use a physical sunscreen. I'll give you some recommendations, but avoid any chemical filters in your sunscreen. So now let's get started with a skincare routine for dry or normal skin type. So in the morning, you can skip your cleanser, just wash your face with water and go ahead with a serum and a moisturizer followed by a sunscreen. You look for ingredients in your serum like niacinamide, ceramide, hyaluronic acid. These are very soothing on the skin and also help in reducing the dryness and flaking that you might be experiencing. So a few of my recommendations are L'Oreal Revitalift Serum, Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid Serum, Dr. Shade's Centella Niacinamide Serum, Cosrx Snail Mucin, and V-Green Mucin. Always look for ceramides in your moisturizer. Ceramides help in repairing skin barrier. It also makes your skin appear more plump, smoother, and reduces dryness. Few recommendations for ceramide moisturizers are the Domaco Ceramide Moisturizer, Oriza Cream, Aqua Oat Cream, Suganda Ceramide, and Squalane Moisturizer. Sunscreen, we should always use a plain zinc oxide sunscreen. Remember that few chemical filters have been shown to be absorbed in the body, though there is not enough data to prove that it causes any harm, but it's better to err on the safe side and use plain zinc oxide or titanium or dioxide based sunscreens. So few recommendations are Lashil Physico sunscreen, the Derma Coat Tinted Zinc sunscreen, Neutrogena Pure Zinc sunscreen. So then your morning routine is done. So keep it simple, just a serum, a moisturizer and a sunscreen and you're good to go. Remember to reapply sunscreen every two hours if you're going to be outdoors. Now let's move on to a nighttime routine. So for nighttime, if you have dry skin, I would suggest just use a cleanser and a moisturizer and you're good to go. Moisturizer at night is very, very important, not only to repair skin barrier, but also to reduce the dryness and flaking that you might experience in the morning. And nighttime is the most important time to use a moisturizer because it reduces transepidermal water loss and you'll get up with plump skin. So a few of my recommendations for cleanser and moisturizer are, for cleanser, it's moist, Episoft Cleanser, The Ordinary Squalane Cleanser, and CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. Ceramide Moisturizer can be same as the AM routine. So you can use the same moisturizer in the morning and at night. Now we'll talk about oily skin care. So if you have oily skin during pregnancy, and you know, sometimes you can develop a lot of acne during pregnancy. So I will just tell you what you can do if you have oily skin and how to take care of it. So in the morning, you will use a cleanser, a serum, moisturizer, and sunscreen. So my recommendation for cleansers are Foxtail Duet Cleanser and Avene Cleanance Cleanser. Niacinamide and azelaic acid are good ingredients to include if you have oily skin type. Niacinamide helps in controlling oil and sebum production from the skin and also reduces acne eruptions. Azelaic acid helps in controlling acne as well as dark spots left behind by acne. So these two ingredients are safe in pregnancy and you can include a serum that contains these ingredients. Few of my recommendations are for niacinamide, the Domaco niacinamide serum, B Body Wise niacinamide, and the ordinary niacinamide. 
for azelic acid use azidome cream or isanic gel a moisturizer is very important we know when you have oily skin type you feel that you can skip a moisturizer but using a moisturizer helps in reducing transepidermal water loss also reduces the irritation potential that some of the serums can have so using a moisturizer is important in order to balance the oil we don't want to dry your skin out too much because that will again send the feedback mechanism to make more oil okay so we want to balance out the oil so that's why using a moisturizer is important few of my recommendations are excella acrophy Oriza and the formula RX Malaysia sunscreen again use a plain zinc oxide sunscreen you can use the same ones for dry skin but i have a few recommendations that feel less oily on the skin so my recommendations are ikran soft z screen sunscreen and the lashil physico sunscreen The Lashil Physico sunscreen is common for both dry and oily skin and I feel it works well for both skin types so you can use it for dry or oily skin both. Now nighttime routine for oily skin type you want to use a cleanser a serum and a moisturizer so cleanser can be same as you use in the AM routine and the serum also the niacinamide and azelic acid same as the AM routine and even the moisturizer can be same as you use in the morning so there's not much difference here but make sure that you use a serum twice in a day in order to control the oiliness now when we want to sensitive skin type Sensitive skin type can sometimes get better during pregnancy because your skin is less irritable or can sometimes get dry and worse. So I will tell you a few recommendations for products that you can use if you have sensitive skin. So few recommendations for cleanser in sensitive skin are Moiss face wash, Episoft face wash, the ordinary squalene cleanser and the CeraVe hydrating cleanser. So in your AM routine you can use a moisturizer and sunscreen and your PM routine use just a moisturizer. Remember that if you have sensitive skin you want to use minimum number of products so that it does not irritate your skin. So few of my recommendations are for moisturizer the Dot & Key skin barrier repair cream, Vigreen moisturizer, Emoline, Cosrx snail mucin moisturizer. For sunscreen you can use the Lashil Physico, the Dermaco tinted plain zinc oxide sunscreen. In the PM routine also you can use the same moisturizer as mentioned I would suggest skip anything else just cleanse your face with a gentle cleanser and then go ahead and apply a good layer of moisturizer that is it that is all you need if you have sensitive skin now for acne prone skin acne can get troublesome during pregnancy we all know that you know skin can get very glowy in pregnancy but if you have oily acne prone skin then you can develop more acne during pregnancy so because a lot of ingredients like retinol and salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide cannot be used during pregnancy i will tell you few of the things that can be used during pregnancy so you can divide into am and pm routine it'll be the same both times so it'll be just a uh, azelic acid cream and a moisturizer and the same will be repeated at night time as well So my recommendations for azelic acid are azidom and isanic gel moisturizer you can use acrophy oriza or acne oc and use a plain zinc oxide sunscreen in your pm routine you can again apply an azelic acid and seal it on with a moisturizer acne can be troublesome during pregnancy so if with these topical medications mainly azelic acid is not helping in controlling your acne then you can visit a dermatologist who can give you some topical uh, antibiotic creams uh, which are prescription based as well as do some chemical peels that can really help in reducing your acne if you have moderate to severe acne chemical peels can be very helpful you will require about 3 to 4 sessions 2 weeks apart this will help in not only reducing your existing lesions but also reduces the occurrence of new acne so some safe chemical peels can be a good option if you have a lot of acne Now we'll move on to talking about dark spot treatment during pregnancy. So you can look for ingredients such as niacinamide and azelic acid. This will help in reducing dark spots. So few of my recommendations are for niacinamide the Dermaco, niacinamide the B Body Wise niacinamide and the ordinary niacinamide. For azelic acid the Azidome and Isanic cream. You can also use serums containing Centella asiatica. Centella not only soothes the skin but also helps in reducing dark spots. So you can use the Dr. Shade's Centella niacinamide serum that works really well. For sunscreen, you can choose a sunscreen according to your skin type as I've mentioned before. The normal and dry skin type can choose the dry skin sunscreen and combination and oily skin type can choose the oily skin type sunscreen. So you can just pick one from the ones I've mentioned before. Using a sunscreen is very important when you have dark spots because uh, sun exposure can exacerbate your dark spots and using a sunscreen can help in early recovery and reduces the worsening of dark spots. So definitely use a sunscreen. 
Now we'll talk about itching during pregnancy. A little bit of itching because of dry skin can occur during pregnancy, which can effectively be managed with application of coconut oil, or you can use the Sparmer stretch mark creams over your whole body. Okay. Otherwise, if you feel the itching is troublesome, then please visit your dermatologist. They will be able to prescribe you some oral medications that are safe during pregnancy. You can also get some rashes, some red lesions during pregnancy that can be very troublesome, especially around the abdomen, which can get very itchy. So this can also be managed with some oral medicines and some topical medications, which are prescription based. So do visit your dermatologist if you have troublesome itching. Now we move on to stretch marks. Stretch marks are one of the most commonly asked questions and I'm repeatedly asked what can be done to remove stretch marks. Remember that stretch marks cannot be removed completely. We can only prevent it. So during pregnancy is the best time to prevent your stretch marks. Okay, so there are certain things you can do in order to prevent the worsening of stretch marks. So remember that stretch marks are genetically determined. So if you have stretch marks on your breast area, on your thighs, on your buttocks, then you are more likely to develop stretch marks on the abdomen as well. If your mother or your sister have developed stretch marks, then you are more likely to develop stretch marks. So we cannot completely prevent it, but we can definitely make it less. So few things to remember in order to reduce stretch marks. First is moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Moisturizer is the only thing that can help you in preventing stretch marks. You don't need fancy moisturizers. You can just use plain coconut oil or use this Palmer's stretch marks cream or any cream that you like. Just make sure that you moisturize properly over the entire abdomen, breast area, buttocks, thighs, two or three times in a day. This is the only way to prevent stretch marks. Second is make sure that your weight gain is slow. In the third trimester, you tend to suddenly gain a lot of weight, but make sure that your weight is kept under check and you have a slow weight gain. You have, must remain active during pregnancy. This is very important. Unless a gynecologist has advised you bed rest, you have to remain active during pregnancy. Just a little bit of slow walking for about 30 to 40 minutes is also helpful. So you can go for evening walks or morning walks uh, for about 30 to 40 minutes. This is enough in order to keep the heart rate going. So this way your weight will also be under control get a nutritionist on board and have a proper diet chart. This can be helpful. You know, we have pregnancy cravings. You might want to, uh, you know, have a lot of sweets, desserts. This can lead to a sudden rapid weight gain. So having a nutritionist on board who will give you a diet plan and a chart to stick to will be very helpful in maintaining your weight so that you have a slow weight gain. I have a detailed video on what all treatments can be done for stretch marks. I'll be linking the video in the iCard above. Do click on it to watch. So there you go, a simple skincare routine for pregnancy. I know pregnancy can be tough on some people, but also enjoyable for some. Remember that you get to experience pregnancy only once or twice in your lifetime. So relax, don't stress too much. Even if you have a little bit of acne, it can come under control. A few dark spots will resolve after pregnancy. So using these ingredients that I've mentioned can help in tackling those issues. I hope you found this video useful. If you like such skin and hair related content, you can follow me on my Instagram handle, Dr. Archil MD, where I post such skin and hair related content daily. Thank you for watching.